All right, ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Let's start. Okay. So, uh, what are we doing today? So, um, I'm going to, uh, my plan is to go up to templates and stuff if we can actually get to there. Um, but I'm going to first bring up all the things that we've talked about last time, go over it very quickly, and um, talk about things like singletons and things like that to understand how we can actually implement them and then. Uh, and we continue to the rest of the stuff. So let's open the things we have done last time. So uh, going to the previous session, these are what we have done. Back of the class, can you see it? Everybody's OK with the size of the font over here? All right. All right, so um, let's start with uh, So we talked about void pointers. Why do we use them? We use void pointers because uh, the, the address uh, of the void pointers, the, it, it relates to no type. Because of that fact, target of a void pointer doesn't have a meaning because the C language does not understand what is sitting at the target. It just knows it's someplace in memory. What actually sits in that memory, no one knows. Because of that, if you are using void pointer, you have to always cast it to whatever you want to use it for. Uh, it's useful because when you call a function with void pointers, you don't have to cast anything. You don't have to cast it. Any address can go to void pointer, no cast necessary. Uh, any type of address is a void pointer. A void pointer is no type, which means you have to uh, set it up. So that's that. We talked about L values and R values, understanding what they are. We said that L value and R value, we, we put some stuff over here in this name thingy to make it work. And we talked about L value and all, R value. We said L value is anything that is sitting at left side of an assignment, which means it has a handle that you can put stuff in it. R value are temporary stuff or stuff with no handle. Uh, when I say a temporary thing, uh, for example, remember in OP244, I used to scream out of my lung that you cannot call a constructor. Remember that? When we said, it, if you call a constructor, what would happen? <laughs> the person who has a microphone should really listen carefully because the next question is directed to that person. So uh, when, you, when you pretend to call, when you call a constructor, so in here I have a name. A name have a constructor called value over here that sets it. So if in main I do this, what did I just do? What happened at line 54? I'm trying to call a constructor, which we said we can't. What's going to happen? It will not call a constructor, no. Yes, it creates a temporary nameless object of type name and immediately it dies at line 54.5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, see the thing is that do not think of constructors as, as functions. We always mention that they are not functions. Uh, constructors and destructors are byproduct of an object getting created and destroyed. You have no control over them. They are getting called when an object is created, and they are getting, uh, and the destructor is getting called when an object is being destroyed. Now, when you write, so if I did this, life was beautiful. If I did this, I had no problem. Now I have a, an object called X, and it's, it, it's Ali, right? But if I don't put that one over there, it means I am not putting any name. Still, I'm creating an object of type name. Because of that fact, the constructor is going to get called. And because it's a nameless object, after it's created, it has no handle. C++ doesn't find necessary to hold it. Therefore, it immediately kills it. And now that's, again, considered as type of R value. It's a temporary thing, OK?
Okay. Also, jack by itself over here is an R value. It's not an L value. You cannot put that one at left side of an assignment. So L value and R value, that's type of a thing almost that we talked about. Um, uh, we talked about, <clears throat> did we? This is yours? It looks like OP244. What did it do over here? Did we talk about something like this? References? Did we? Uh, yeah, I think Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, that's that's because I just covered that in OP244. I'm like, what is this? So, yeah, uh, references uh, um, are, uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say over there. In, uh, I don't want to teach. I don't want to teach you references again. Hopefully, you know what they are. If they don't know, ask a question, I'll answer. Anyone have any problem with this code? All right. <clears throat> we talked about pointer to pointers. We said don't take pointers too seriously. When you create, when you add an asterisk after a type, essentially you are creating pointer of something. <clears throat> employee asterisk, that's employee pointer. Never say employee asterisk. Never say employee star. It is an employee pointer. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm going to get to it. I, I, I haven't got to that point. You're talking. Today it's all that. So we're going to talk about that. So you're talking about. So what are you talking about here? This one you're talking about? Yeah. So if you don't have an R value, yeah. if, you don't, if, if, you, if you don't implement an L value, will the R value will be called? Is that what you're asking? So you're saying if I don't have this one, if I don't have this one, will the other one be called? I have no idea. Let's try. I seriously don't know. I'll, I'll check it out. Never done something like that in my life. So usually when, when something like that happens, I delete it. Which means this object is only supposed to be, oh, sh that's too early. But this object is only supposed to be moved. So never done it, but I'll try it. So when I give you they give the example, remind me to remove it. I really don't know. OK. So uh, I, it, I don't know. If I was the compiler, I wouldn't let you. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we said pointer. Uh, so uh, a t uh, an asterisk beside a type creates a pointer, uh, creates a, a new type of pointer. So those two together, they are, it's a type, a single type called integer pointer. So the PTR is a variable of its own. If I come down over here and explain a little bit more, if I create a pointer over here, P is a variable of its own. Although its type is pointer, it's a variable. A variable by nature is sitting in memory. When it sits in memory, it has address of its own. So P has an address of its own. If I want to extract that address of P and put it in another variable, I need to create a pointer of that type. Because the type is already a pointer, it becomes a pointer to a pointer. It's, it sounds cryptic, but it really is not. It's just recursive. So if I have an integer pointer variable and I want to hold its address in a pointer called Q, that's going to be an integer pointer pointer Q, which means integer pointer and an asterisk beside it, a type and a pointer beside it, pointer representation beside it. And we uh, explain that cre creating many different functions over here to, to, to show you exactly what it is. So uh, like we created a pointer to a, to a, to a uh, an array, and we said, what if I want to change the content of P using a pointer? If that's the case, either I have to pass a reference of it, or I have to pass a pointer of it. If I pointer, if I ask a pass pass a pointer of it, it has to be a pointer to a pointer, which is this one. Okay, so it actually goes to the next level. If I want to actually uh, 
modify the one that is main inside here, then I have to pass the pointer to a pointer to a pointer, and it goes like that, and it can keep going over and over and over. And so um, essentially, this is what it is. OK, so you have a variable, OK? You, you hold the address of this variable in a pointer, so this becomes a, a, a pointer to this variable. Now, the, the one that you have over here is a variable by itself if you want to hold its address. So this becomes the address for this one. If you want an address of this one, then it's going to be a pointer to a pointer. And if you want the address of this one, then it's going to be a pointer to pointer to pointer. And it keeps going like that. So when you put triple pointer over here, you're actually going so let's put it this way. If I say triple pointer, I am referring to the very last one. OK? Remember that. So when you put three asterisks, it jumps back. If you put two asterisks, it jumps over here. If you put one asterisk, it jumps over here. One asterisk comes, jumps over here. So it's always like that. Practice with it. Uh, try to play with it, and, and, and it's going to get crystal clear. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that when you see something like it, don't get, don't get scared. It's a pointer to an integer pointer pointer. If you see something like this, it's a pointer to an integer pointer. If you see something like this, it's a pointer to a long. OK? So just say it that way, and you'll be fine. In, in years of programming, I think once I see a triple pointer in my life, like, nobody does that. Why do you want to do that? Like, you don't do that. Like, that's just cruel, OK? So pointer to a pointer, I understand. You want to modify a pointer, but pointer to a pointer, bananas. OK, obviously, to, to Make this easier, you can always use the find statements, uh, type def statements. So if you create a type def to an integer PTR, then it becomes more understandable. You can say integer PTR pointer, <laughs> and that becomes more understandable. That's that. We said, talked about real syntax of main, and we said main receives an arg C and an arg V. Uh, in the other one, we, the first one we are show, when we showed it, we had the arg V as, as something like this. And that's for rookies, so, so, so they don't get scared. So it says it's a pointer of character arrays. But a character array by itself is essentially a pointer. Therefore, you can remove that. Uh, square bracket thingy over there and actually put two asterisks and it's uh, the exact same meaning with absolutely no difference. So we have already used pointer to pointers, but we don't, we are not aware of. We talked about the curly bracket thingy. It's in, we covered in OP244 already, but just for you to know that this is a universal way of initialization. It's not to set anything, it's to initialize them. Remember the difference between initialization and setting? These are for initialization, and it just makes your life easier, specifically when you want to default something. If you want to set something to its default value, it's always easier to use curly bracket instead of thinking of what is the default value for this. Like if you want to set a pointer to null, you don't want to go equal to N-U-L-L-P-T-R. You just put an empty curly bracket in front of it and it's done. If you want to set a Boolean value to false, you don't have to write equal F-A-L-C. You just put curly bracket and you're done. So, and if you have a class and you want to default that class, same thing. It defaults the class. Obviously, uh, um, Obviously, uh, classes with uh, no argument constructed, with default constructed, you don't need to put anything in front of them. They will be initialized anyway. But if you put empty curly bracket, it means the same. We talked about range-based for loops. We said for loops can be used. Is it range-based over here? No. Range-based for loops. And we said we can use a range-based for loop with a primitive type of an array only in the scope in which you're in. 
you cannot pass an array. If this was a vector, later on we'll understand, you can use a range-based for loop and pass the vector around because vector is actually not a, a, a primitive type. And when you pass it around, it passes all its information around so it knows exactly what it is. A vector of size 4, when passed, it's still a vector of size 4. But when a primitive array of size 4 passed, becomes a regular pointer. It has nothing to do with, a, with an array anymore. So uh, that the language is not aware of its size or anything. The only place that an array size is known is its own scope and not any other place. Are we okay? Cheer up, people. Why everybody's so serious today? <laughs> like everybody's like mm, angry. Okay, GH, we're going to go unions. <clears throat> we said that uh, a specific type of construct we have in C language, we call it union. What unions are good for is when you want to look at the same piece of memory with different types of glasses, <laughs> okay? So if you have a piece of memory that it's eight bytes and it's a double, and you wanna look at that eight byte, exact same eight byte as an array of eight characters, union's your friend. Or if you wanna look at that one as an array of two integers, you can still do so. So what you do, you create a union and you put all the good stuff that you have over there. So when I say union double A, uh, the biggest size of what we have tells you what the size of the union is. Unlike a structure, it's not gonna align it and set it. The biggest size that you have becomes the size of the union. Everything else starts from the beginning of the size of that union. So when you write double A, the integer B becomes the first four bytes of that double. And character C7 becomes the first seven bytes of that double. Obviously, when you set one, it destroys the other two, okay? Um, if you want to know what is, what is a bit pattern of a double in memory, you can create a double and a character C8, then see what are the pattern of bits in each character of the double, so you can see exactly what is a bit pattern of a double in memory, for example. Okay? Huh? One more time? Uh, to, uh, explain that. Sorry, I have I'm an ESL thing. What does it mean by weekly? Weekly encapsulated yeah. because they're public by default. Is that what you? Uh, pardon me. Yeah, because so to put a public, put a private. It becomes strongly. <laughs> I think that's the reason, if I recall correctly, because uh, if I know, I said these type of buzzwords, like weekly encapsulated. I really don't know what that means. I have to. It means like it's it's. Public by default? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out later on and find out. I don't know what the answer is to that. Remember I told you, get another teacher, not me? All right, so that's that. Um, we talked about nameless structures and say you can actually create a structure if you, if you want just one instance of one structure or class or whatever. You want to only one instance of it to get created. You can do that. Don't put any name on it and simply uh, instantiate it at the line. This, this technique comes from C. In C language, because nothing was typed, no structure becomes a type. You have to actually, uh, when you create struct student in C, you have to, to, to instantiate it. You have to use the word struct again. So C programmers started using typedef. Like it, it, so whenever they wanted to create a struct, they, they, wrote, they wrote typedef struct open curly bracket, wrote the everything, and then at the end put the name. Therefore, the name of the type became the structure. So they did, it became a type, like C++. C++ does that internally, you don't need to do it. But if you have a case that you need to package some information only once to do something with it, and you don't need to recreate it, you can create nameless structures like this. So essentially, the name over there is string first and last for that student. I gave you an example of something called tracer, and I said I'm going to create a, a um, and I, for this thing, I said, let's say I just want to have, assume that I want to have uh, uh, a class called tracer, and I want, I don't want many instances uh, get created out of it, so this is how I create it, and because the class doesn't have a name, to be able to return this, I have to use the word auto. 
And that's one of the good places that, you, that I can show you why auto is needed. Because in here, if I want to return the reference of this thing, what is the type of it? I don't have it. There is no name up there, right? Either I have to repeat the whole class's prototype before this, or I just write auto. So auto does that, and I can actually return it. So this tracer uh, is something like C out, but very bad design one. Uh, yeah, it just it has a Boolean that goes on and off, and you can with this tracer, you can show debug messages or, or turn it off and on and go. I'm going to make it better today and teach some uh, 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 things, more things about statics that we didn't know. Yes? Because it's awful? But then it, like, if, if you just saw this, do you know what, does it re what is it returning? Like, be this, auto is, C programmers are extremely lazy, okay? Because of that, they need things to, like, you will see, soon we're going to get into templates and standard template library. We go over there. You see the name of a type of something becomes like 200 characters long. When you have something like that and you want to re create a reference of something, it becomes painful to three hours type something. That's why you use auto. But if you have a small little cutesy thing, don't use auto. You can, but it's bad. Bad style. And probably it's discouraged in uh, standard coding protocols of many companies. But um, again, when it makes your life easy, by all means, use it. In here, we had to. I had no choice. But uh, yeah. I think I explained in the class before that, like if you have an, for example, unsigned long double and you want to have that honestly you cannot have it on side you have a long long you have a long long int and you want to every single time type that that's difficult so it's better you or unsigned long long int such a long thing instead of doing something like that uh, you can simply write auto is equal to and then it uh, uses it okay so whenever uh, it's difficult to get the thing, use it. Anyway, so the tracer was done to do the tracing thingy that I'm going to change it today and uh, show you uh, uh, one of the reasons we use static and why, what statics are used for, for creating singletons. Uh, what is a singleton? The person with a microphone. You know what a singleton is? Look, <laughs> anybody knows what a singleton is? Anyone? Yeah, when something can only have, like, C out is a singleton. Because it's only one, you cannot create two of it, out of it. C in is a singleton. Okay, they did, the, if you try to instantiate iStream, it won't allow you. Because the, the, the constructor is private. So how did they create it the first time? You cannot create an instance of iStream because that doesn't make sense. You cannot have two C outs. It just doesn't make sense, right? Yes, you may have a C out and a C log and a C error that I understand. But just one C out, you can't, right? Or C in, you can't. It's, it's console input. You don't have two consoles. You have one, right? So how do we create singletons? I'm going to change that tracer to a singleton today and teach you how it's done. There is a beautiful thing called inheritance. You don't need to override anything. If you don't like it, just inherit something. Inherit something out of iStream. My iStream then override all the functionalities of iStream the way you want it. Change anything. We have, we have learned to do this in, in OP244. We had uh, a basic uh, uh, interface, and from that interface we had uh, classes created and classes had methods and methods changed as we went through and we overloaded it over and over and over and we overwrite them too uh, using virtuality and many of and all the functionalities that you have in I, iStream and OStream all the important ones are all the ones that are supposed to be upgraded you can, they are virtual actually so you can actually inherit them and change whatever you want okay try it like uh, 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 inherit iStream and make the uh, insertion operator accept spaces, for example. Although you can do it using manipulators, but hey, okay. 
But uh, anyways, so that's that. Use of static functions, then I uh, showed something like C string, and I said, I want to do C string stuff, and um, because I want to do C string stuff, I don't want to use uh, uh, the C string header file. I want to have my stuff carried around because these are just functionalities that I'm using. Uh, either I have to create standalone functions in a thing like C, which is not good, or I want to put them in a class. If you create static methods inside a class, then the methods become, a, they become class variables, uh, class uh, methods. Therefore, you don't need to instantiate C string to call copy. And you do, really, you don't need to. Why do you need to instant? Because it's just a utility thingy that copies uh, the, uh, the, a source to a destination, and that's it. By the way, I don't think this is going to compile on, on, uh, on matrix. It's going to give you warning. You have to take it out. Make it, I'll, I'll make it. So these, these, because of this assignment, it's going to keep telling you, hey, you, this is not, uh, this is not uh, you're not comparing the two. It gives you a warning. OK? I know it's not comparing because I'm looking for null, and I want to stop at null. So uh, uh, cryptic programs from C, like this, usually carry warnings. OK, so that's that. Uh, so if you move that to make either I'll do it, or if you, oh, I actually wrote the thing over here. I didn't read this comment. I, I actually, uh, yeah, so fix for Jesus. <laughs> Probably I mentioned this last semester, too. OK. Uh, yeah, and I created a, a, a program over here that uh, reads a, a, a string from, from keyboard dynamically and returns it. So whatever this thing returns, you have to delete it, remember. Okay, if you use this, it returns a dynamic inf uh, string that you receive from console. When you use this read to receive it, you need to delete it. Later on, we can change this to smart pointers so you don't have to. Uh, we'll come to it, and we'll see what they are. <clears throat> OK? And that's that. So talking about tracer, like the tracer that I created, uh, <clears throat> bringing it back up. Oh, just take a look at it quickly, the tracer thingy that I had. It was this one, right? So the tracer that I created, essentially, I overloaded the the in insertion operator to tracer to print different messages and uh, 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 be able to turn it on and off so I can put uh, uh, debugging messages in my program. And because of, they are all tracer, I can simply search them and remove them very quickly. Okay? If you use C log and C error and stuff like that to do that, you may really use C log for logging somewhere. If that's the case, then uh, you don't want to use that. So this tracer is a good thing. So we're going to change this to something like C out to a singleton uh, with one instance created out of it, and we'll see how it's going to happen. So the very first thing I need to do to create this, uh, which one should we do? Let's, uh, let's do the C string first. Let's do the C string first. So existing item. So first, I'm going to modularize the C string that I had over there. So these are the, uh, uh, the empty shells of the module that I have that I use as, as usual, right? So it's SDVS, you know that, right? No, I think it just, uh, what did it do? It just started. So it's did it? It doesn't matter. It's just experimental. It doesn't matter. Probably it, the file size got big enough. And then it shut down on the next one and the next one. Yeah. <laughs> then but we'll see what happens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's just an experiment. <laughs> if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay. Just, just, I'm just trying something in here. Okay. So what was I saying? Yeah. So uh, let's create a C string and see how we're going to do. So all the things that static functions that I created in that C string, whatever I had in here, Static functions that I have in C stream, I'm going to bring it to the uh, to the class. So these are the prototypes of all the things that I created. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry, class C string. I forgot about that. 
class C string okay and obviously I need IO stream so okay um, uh, students keep asking like why don't you just copy the code you have the code why you why you copy the pieces and type few pieces um, I may I'm gonna share you something um, oh, a great professor in MIT was actually creating a, a, a had a, like a 50 minutes lecture to, to to teach how to teach how to speak okay uh, bringing stuff fast like that um, doesn't give you enough time to actually see what the code has done. So when I actually code, that gives you enough time to actually see what I'm doing first. And secondly, that weight that you anticipate, come on, type that, type that, that puts it in your memory. So um, be patient, okay? <laughs> I, 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 I keep getting advice from students, teach like this, teach like that, and this is the response to that, okay? Okay. Another thing that we need to talk about is what we call a constant expression. So we have, we have so if I want uh, some constant value over here, for example, to tell me what is the, the buffer size buffer size that I am using for my read. But buffer size, it means chunks of memory that's going to add every time. So, so what happens, uh, it, it creates 50, allocates 50 bytes. It gets the from console. If it passes, that makes it 100, makes it 150. And when everything is done, it resizes it exact and returns the value. That's how that read thing is working. So that tells, like, what is the buffer size for it in case you want to change it. When I put over here const, this const makes this read only, we know that. Are we all okay with that? But well, that happens at runtime, okay? Which means this constant is actually, it becomes constant at runtime. Compiler has no idea that this is const. And it cannot optimize its code generation knowing that this read buffer size is 50 and it's not going to change. If you want this thing to be, to be expressed to compiler that, hey, this read buffer size is 50, if you want to, like if you have a 50 literal somewhere, share this 50 with that one and don't create another one, something like that, whatever. To, to, the constant expressions can be used for uh, functions, can be used for uh, uh, variables, but the thing is that when you write constant expression over here, You're actually telling to comp the compiler actually will be aware of it, and this happens at compile time. So compiler can optimize your code based on that value. Okay? If you if you get what I mean, fine. If you know, remember what I said when the time comes, and you get that professional in writing C++, and you want the code to get optimized, then you'll know constant expression and what it's for. So anything that you can make it constant expression, it's better to do it. Uh, because uh, it, uh, the compiler will be optimizing your code based on it. Yes. Yes, yes. 33 minutes and 51 seconds, 52, 53, and it's going. Okay, thank you. I mean, keep asking those questions. It's actually good. <laughs> all right, so that's that one. Now, if I want to create that, like, I'm just going to bring the, uh, all the, uh, the methods of this one into uh, the header file. Uh, which are as follows. Again, like virtuals, when you create a virtual, you don't bring the virtual to the, to the uh, uh, function definitions. It's only in declaration. It's the same thing over here. You don't bring the static over here. Static is only in the, uh, so it essentially says that this copy belongs to, to CSDR and not the instances of CSDR. And I'm going to have all these things. Obviously, we're going to add the uh, namespace, uh, std, and IO stream, and all the good stuff. So now this CS stream of C string of mine becomes a tool that I can carry around. And at any place that I include uh, 
csdr.h, I can use copy, len, allo, allo copy, and read for it as, as we mentioned. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. So let's compile it and make sure I'm not going to, I didn't make a, make a boo boo copying the code. Uh, compile, not compare, compile, compile. Okay, looks good. Now, the important one over here that we actually want to, to learn and understand is the tracer. So I take that Odo at nameless stuff out of tracer because now I want the tracer to actually be something that I can refer to later on. And I, and I want to implement it as a module with a header file and a body and stuff like that. So I cannot make it just a nameless thing. I, I turned it to a normal class. So what do I do when I want to actually make this a singleton so nobody can create another instance out of it and it becomes a, 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 a only one instance of it is created? So uh, I'll create, I'll bring the class in. Uh, the very first thing that I, so let's create the class tracer. Okay. Now, in class tracer, I have that Boolean mtrace that goes on and off if I, uh, to, to, to actually show the, the, uh, the messages um, uh, for me. The very important, most important thing is to make this in a way so nobody can instantiate it. How do I do that? I'm going to put the default constructor in a private section of the thing. You cannot delete it, because if you delete it, then nobody can. Uh, it has to exist, but be private. So nobody can instantiate this but the tracer itself. And the trick is how to make tracer, tracer create itself. OK? So I, create, I make it public, and I'm going to have all the good stuff in here. So, so I'm going to. I'm going to uh, bring all the things that Tracer is supposed to do, OK? Obviously, it's not supposed to get copied. It's not supposed to be assigned. Uh, uh, and I need to be able to uh, uh, set, uh, uh, turn the tracing on and off, uh, print different things into. So all those things are over here. And they are returning constant references of Tracer, OK? And if I uh, bringing the uh, the source code for the for the functions are pretty simple and straightforward, so I'm going to just uh, bring all the code in here. So we're going to be in tracer.cpp, and let's split the window. So these are all the functions that we had over there. Obviously, I'm going to have the IO stream added to it. OK, so the, I don't think we need to explain the functions. You know what they are, very simple and straightforward. Uh, I'm going to just add one constant expression to this to be able to print new lines easily. And I'm going to uh, use uh, um, a constant expression uh, called NL that's going to be new line, backslash n. So it can get printed using character. So when I do NL, it's like end L. It prints a new line for me. So I'll add that one over there too. So again, that's a good thing. So it means that NL actually uh, becomes a constant expression at compile time, not at runtime. OK, so that's that. So um, now where the magic happens to actually make this thing uh, uh, instantiate only once. So I'm going to create a function called instantiate. I have to, I'm going to create a function called instantiate. So if I, so I'm going to call over here something like um, um, tracer reference uh, tracer and um, instantiate, OK? And this is going to instantiate a tracer. The problem is that uh, if, if it instantiates a tra the, the tracer, let me just uh, 
Yeah. Just want to make sure the spelling is right and everything is good. The problem is that if I do something like this, and if I actually create the instantiate over here, then anybody can call instantiate and create five instances out of it, right? How can I make this function unique? So there's not going to be many copies out of it. Static. Static. We said static functions belong to class, not the object, right? So if I make the function static, the function becomes only one out of whatever I have, right? Now, the key is to actually make this create only one object. How can I have an instance of a type created and guaranteed that it's only created once and not more than once. Static again. So what I do in here, I simply say, what do I say? I simply say, static, not that static, static, tracer t because this is a member of tracer it can call its constructor it's in its own private property there's no problem with it so tracer gets created and then i return it oh the second time this function is hit because it's static it's not going to get created again it simply returns the reference of the old one so if somebody creates this instantiate, calls the instantiate 50 times, it's going to get the reference of the good old thing. So this will create only one tracer for it. Now, I need to make that to a variable so everybody can use. So what do I do? I'm going to go to the header file of tracer. Uh, I'm going to go to the top of right over here and call the the instantiate in this uh, scope. So I'm going to create a file scope, uh, 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 what should we call it? A file scope uh, uh, tracer. So I'm going to say uh, tracer reference. Let's call it tracer with lowercase. And I'm going to say is set to tracer instantiate. So what happens over here is this. It creates a static one, returns its reference, so this tracer becomes a new name for t, which is a variable that is just created once. Are we okay with this? Now, all I need to do is to make this available to everyone. How do I do that? I'll go here. I did that in OP244 again, and I'm going to do it over here. So in here, I'm going to say extern tracer reference tracer this tells that there is an instance called tracer in this file you can use it and it's not going to be able to be called by anyone uh, it's, gonna, it's not going to be recreated by anyone so tracer becomes only one instance of this class and it's a singleton you cannot create two instances out of this it's only one and the name is tracer OK? So you can use that like C out. Just include tracer, and you have a uh, tracer for yourself. And you can actually use it to do all the tracing. So compile this, and hopefully it's going to be OK. Oh, why is it in header files, source files? Compile. All right. OK? Pardon me? This tracer? When I'm giving you an example and I want to show debugging messages, I want to show you constructor got called, this called called, that called called. So you use that to print all the messages. And if you want to see actually how the program works without all those garbage messages printed, you simply set the trace to off. 
poof, all the messages disappear, and program runs as if there is no debugging messages in it. It's very helpful, actually. Yes? Why do I need to make the instantiate static? Okay, it's very simple. Actually, it's simple to explain. Very simple to explain. If you create a leg, if you create <laughs> water, if you cre <laughs> if you create a regular function, then for each object, it's a separate scope. Each time instantiate is called, a new static variable is created for that function that belongs to the object. I need to make the function unique and the object unique for, to guarantee it's, it is unique. So what I'm saying is that if I, I'm going to use my artistic uh, skills again. <laughs> So when you, when you create, so I have the class tracer, correct? Right? If you have a regular function over here, every object of type tracer that is called will have one, will have one of that in it, correct? But when you make this static, then it actually is going to, be outside and shared by all the objects. And because this is the one that is creating the object, then your object will be unique too. This is outside of the class. When you instantiate that, there is nothing in it, right? So the object it creates, it's one instance out of that one. Oops. OK, let me clear. All right. So that's that. Let's come back over here. Now, let's talk about the names, the, um, uh, a class name that I'm going to create to actually uh, sh uh, show, uh, remind you of uh, uh, rule of. Uh, uh, rule of three. So I'm just going to create a <clears throat> class name in here in main. And I'm, let me add actually those two things over here. So I'm going to include, <clears throat> I'm going to include C string dot H and I'm going to include tracer. And then I'm going to create a, a class name. Now, a using namespace stds, using namespace stds, and there we go. Oh, and the C string is capitalized. Okay, so I have a class name. It has a value. We had like 50,000 times we had this example, so I don't want to. So it has a constructor with a default value over here. It allocates and copies whatever the value it has in the name. So the value over here will be a copy, a dynamic copy of whatever it's being set to. And using the tracer, it's going to say tr cre uh, create m value. So the tracer actually prints the messages for us. <clears throat> we create a copy constructor that actually copies the value. So it's going to say it's copying that value using such and such. So it actually shows the thing and calls the assignment operator. Again, standard copy constructor, done that five, done is five million times. Then I have an, uh, a copy assignment, receives the constant reference of name, checks for self-copying, shows a, uh, the, the, uh, uh, an assigned, so it's, we know on traces, so we know assignment is being called. First deletes the value if it exists and then allocates and copies the m value to value, so essentially it does the allocation. I, I, I encapsulated these string stuff so we don't look for the syntax of DMA. 
just focus on what we are doing in here, okay? And then I have a destructor, which I show that I'm removing, removing the value from memory, and I'm going to say delete the, the value. The value is deleted. I create a print, standard print, that says O stream print is O stream OS. It receives a reference to C out by, by default and shows the value if the value exists. A safe empty state is simply says it's null string. So if there is nothing in here, it shows null string. If there is something, it prints the value. Be okay with that? Down to this point. And then I have a read <coughs> that first deletes whatever the value I have, reads a dynamic string from the, from the console, puts it in value, and returns the i string. Okay? That's the read thingy that we have in that C string. Standard overload for the insertion and extraction operator. Are we good? And now if I actually write a tester for this, I'm creating an A and I'm going to say, I'm going to set the tracer to true, okay? Which uh, I don't need to because uh, I'm going to actually um, uh, show you that because uh, in tracer I'm going to remove that true so in tracer I set the default for the for the trace to be true so if you say trace it will trace it so I'll remove that one not to create any confusion on that so so this I'm just going to say trace so it's going to start tracing okay then I'm going to say C in A to show C in A is happening and see what happens behind the scene. Then I'm going to say hello A and I'm going to say B. So one by one I'm showing all the stuff that are happening and, and we'll see how everything goes. Okay? Are we okay down to this point? So rule of three, OOP244, nothing new in here. Okay, the only new stuff is the tracer and the C string thingy. Are we all good? Good, back there. Can you see anything over there? You look, you want to go sit on, I, I feel bad. You got, you're at very bad real estate over there. Or you can actually come over here. Maybe you can <laughs> look at this one. I don't know. Sorry about that. It's just, yeah, back there. You. Anyways. So <clears throat> let's uh, uh, compile. All right, so let's put this one at left and the output at right. So we're going to go through it. Um, so it's going to say, good morning, yada, yada, yada. This is going to create uh, a name by default. Uh, oh, we, we should have uh, put the tracer before that. <laughs> because the tracer was off, it didn't show anything. <laughs> right, so I'll stop it and I run it again. Yeah, so now the tracer is on. Now it's going to say create null string. So it creates something out of nothing. It's, it's a null. Then it's going to say enter the name, and it's going to call the C in, as you see. And the C in is going to happen. So in here, I'm going to say uh, uh, fardad, and I hit enter. Okay. So um, fardad is red. It's going to say hello, fardad. And now it's going to create a, a, a B using an A, copy constructor. Are we okay with this? So the copy constructor is going to happen, copying fardad using assign yada yada to fardad. So essentially it assigns the empty one to fardad, which is whatever it was, right? So that's that one. Then it's going to say uh, A is set to jack. So if I actually use an assignment and put jack in the assignment thingy, what happens is that, but by the way, what happens over here? So this is the code that is being called, A set to Jack. And I do not have an assignment operator. What happens? I don't have an operator that receives a constant character pointer. Actually, a microphone. Who has the microphone? <laughs> what is being called? Pardon me? You know what's going to get called? Actually, you lost. I have no, no, you lost? Okay. So if you ask questions, if you lost, you stop me. 
but let me just tell you something. If you're lost, it means half a class is lost. You have to stop me, OK? So this, again, this name thingy, I'm going to go back and explain what name is one more time and then ask, because this is an important thing. This is OOP244 that we need to uh, remember. I created a name that has a cons one argument constructor, copy constructor, copy assignment, destructor, print, and read. That's it. Now, I am creating an instance of type name that is A, and I'm assigning it, assigning it to a constant character pointer, which I do not have an operator overloaded for. What, the, what will the compiler do in this, this type of scenarios? Give it to the lady. You can just pass it to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat the question. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that, I have a, a dynamic class with rule of three and nothing else, mm -hmm. and an overloading for print and reading from console. That's it. It doesn't have anything else. The, uh, I have a constructor that accepts a constant character pointer and rule of three. Now I am setting the class to a constant character point. The default constructor. One argument constructor will be called, thank you, to create. One argument constructor will be called to create a temporary nameless object out of Jack. Because compiler always tries to cast and make things work. If this was an integer, it wouldn't have worked. It would give you an error. But because it has a tool to cast the constant character pointer to a name, which essentially means creating a temporary nameless object out of that one, it actually uh, uh, assigns and removes the jack from memory immediately. So it creates the jack thingy, okay, assigns for that to that jack, and then removes it from memory. Temporary nameless objects are doomed to die when they do their business. Okay? Are we okay down to this point? Muchas gracias. Okay, so so we're gonna uh, so now we're gonna do an assignment. The assignment is easy. It goes to the, the the assignment operator and it shows the values. And at the end, the destructors are called. Removes Fardat from memory. <laughs> Apparently, it did because of all the people in OP two four four. It's actually stating the fact over here. And all my OP244 students forgot everything about OP244. And, uh, and that's that. So just to show you what happens if the tracer was off, this is what happens. So if I put over here false, and I run the program again, <clears throat> what I will have name, far that, and poof, that's it. Nothing will be shown and program runs properly. The person who asked, what do I use? What do we use the tracer for? This we can use it for if you want. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? All right. <clears throat> this brings us, so this one's going to be rule of three. <clears throat> A, rule of three. We are going very slow, but, but I, I can't do I, I don't care. I, I, want, I want everything to get covered. I just don't want to come and tell you what the topics are and pass through. Um, if we are late, I'm going to even postpone the workshops if we don't get to it. I'm going to say, don't do the workshop. We're going to be like this. <clears throat> That's so. Remember the syntax of casting in, in uh, syntax of casting in C language. In C language, if I wanted to, if I wanted to cast, say if I had integer a, and I have <clears throat> double b, if I wanted to put b in a, I could say over here integer b. Correct. In C++, we said the syntax has changed. The parentheses come around 
B, that's what the casting is, right? But that's not really casting. You are creating a temporary nameless object. That's calling the constructor, remember? So when you say int b, you are actually asking the compiler to create a temporary nameless integer out of a v. So I have an integer at right, an integer at left. Does that make sense? Now when we are coming down to here, compiler sees a uh, time, time, yeah. Compiler sees a name at left and a constant character pointer at right. As soon as it sees this, it checks, is this available? Can I cast Jack to name? Compiler does it. That's what casting is in C. Do you ever write int b? No, you write a is equal to double b. It does it automatically. Behind the scene it happens. So when compiler looks at Jack, takes a look and says, let me see if there is, if I have a constructor of name that accepts a constant character pointer. Do I? Yes. So I'm going to build a nameless object of type name of Jack, do the assignment, kill it. That is called casting. Automatic casting. Be good? All right. Please do what he did and ask questions. Don't, if you think that you don't understand now, you're going to go home, read something, and understand it, you're terribly mistaken. Okay? If you understand it now, you can go home, read it, and affirm it. Okay? If you don't understand it now, then you have to come to me again. Please ask questions. Okay. Now, I wish I had a, like, do you mind if I, what are you looking for? <laughs> you you want to leave? No, no. Um, can I borrow a couple of, who are, who are these? These are, does these belong to anyone? Good, so I can pick them up. All right. Let's say these are two identical bottles of water. <laughs> They are not the same, okay? Let's say it's like that, okay? Now, um, if I, if, what was returning of a function? Remember that? Re when we said when a function returns something, it's like there is a force field over here. I'm not allowed to pass this object through that force field. What the function does, it creates a temporary nameless object, puts all the information, copies this over here, clones this, passes that one, take it, take it, <laughs> passes to the other person, that person does its work with it, then throws it away. This was the temporary name, that's why whenever you return something from a function, that's why whenever you return something from a function, uh, copy constructor is called, to create that temporary nameless function. You okay with that? If he is supposed to get this thing from me, so take this, okay. So this is his bottle, and this is my bottle. I want to pass this to him. So the temporary nameless object gets passed to him. Now I'm him, okay? It receives it. So I have the two objects. This is return. This is the object that I have that I want to put this return thing over here. So what do I do? I dynamically allocate everything in here, do all the stuff, do all the copying, then throw this out. The destructor gets called and all the memory is deleted. What if I, instead of all that, I could just empty the contents of this one to this one and this becomes empty? So no dynamic memory allocation happening. What if I just make all the properties of this one move to the next one instead of copying it? So this one, after that fact, when this temporary nameless is passed through, I just empty everything in here. This one becomes empty. Destructor will once again get called. There is nothing over there to destroy. No dynamic memory allocation happened. This one has all the things that this one had. And life continues. This is called moving. 
not copying. So this saves lots of time. Instead of this temporary nameless object getting created, I create a copy out of it, and then this one dies and all the things is deallocated, this copy will be made and it's returned out. And when it's returned out, what happens? I'm going to move all the information to here so that expensive dynamic memory allocation and copying and all that crap doesn't happen. And then I can just throw it away and save lots and lots and lots of time. Are we okay? This is called moving. So the rule of three is now rule of five. We have copy constructor, copy assignment, move constructor, move assignment. Yes. Somebody had a question. And I just looked like a guppy over there because I was at the edge of the thing and it didn't actually record that. Yes. Yeah, why do we still need because sometimes you want to copy. <laughs> sometimes you want both of them to exist. Huh? No, no, but at the end, at the end, sometimes I tell you, go get me coffee. Okay, if you go to Tim Hortons, okay, you, you ask them to give you a copy, to give you a coffee. So what they do, they actually move the coffee to you and you bring it to me. That's good, that's move constructor, right? But if I have a coffee in my hand, I say, I want one of these to give it to him. You take this, you empty it, you give it to him, I'm going to left with no coffee. I don't want it to be moved. You need to know when you need, and compiler is very smart to identify if it needs to be moved or, yeah, and you can actually force it. Say, I want this to be moved, but this one not. You can do that too. We'll get to it. Questions down to this point. All right. All right. <coughs> Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Break. Let's go for a break. Because you guys look like <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Seriously? It's only turning on now. Yeah, I think it started. There we go. Yeah. App connection is not supported during. Who wants to do app connection? No one does app connection. Okay. So, uh, by the way, uh, uh, I missed some of the GitHub invitations. Some of you sent me invitations on, on GitHub. A week passed when I clicked on it, it was gone. So if you see uh, that you ask for, uh, ask, add me as collaborator and I didn't accept it, not that I don't want to accept, I just missed it, please send it again. Thank you. All right. All right. <clears throat> so. Now that we have created this name thingy, let me just see if I, if I have anything over here that I need to. <coughs> I think we're good. Okay, so <clears throat> now please uh, uh, pay attention to this. Uh, um, When we do copying, this is essentially what happens. You have, you have a, an instance of a class. That instance of a class has a pointer or any type of outside source. We don't care if it's a pointer. It has some resources outside of it. <clears throat> and that resource is at some place doing something, whatever, right? Okay, so this is your class, your object, not a class, okay? When you copy or assign these, this thing, like when you copy, you don't delete the thing, but, but the original, the, the idea is that when you actually copy this, this is what happens. So you, you first 
create, do the, uh, like, get the object created by whatever it is, either assignment or copying, then that object of yours has <clears throat> uh, a pointer like the other one. You measure and see what is the size or what is this thing over here. To the exact same size, you uh, uh, allocate memory. Then what you do after is to copy everything from the other one in here, correct? <clears throat> and, and then you do the assignment, so, so it, it essentially goes like this. Therefore, a copy is created, right? That's regular copy or assignment thingy that we have. Are we okay down to this point? With moving, this is what happens. You create the object. Instead of copying that, you point to the data of the other one. No copying is happening. Then you sever the connection of the other one by setting it to, to null. So this object will go empty. This object will point to data of that one. Therefore, no copying, no, no dynamic memory, because nothing happened. Actually, the, the, the logic of move constructor and move assignment is much simpler than copy constructor and copy assignment. When you do copying, you have to measure the thing, make sure it's this and all. In the here, you don't do that. You just point to it, and you're done. OK, let's take a look at it and see how it's done. <clears throat> no? Yeah, it, yes and no. Yeah, you are doing shallow copying manually. Because <laughs> if when you create a copy constructor, shallow copy doesn't happen, right? So if copying is happening, you have to tell the compiler, no, 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 don't do that copy. Do this. But nothing happened. So you have to do the shallow copying manually. OK? So yes, it's shallow copy, but you have to do it manually, if that makes sense. So. So how do I do it? <clears throat> Let's do the assignment, because we know always copy constructor is copy logic is done through assignment logic. So I'm going to do the assignment logic first. So <clears throat> what I will do, I'm going to say name, reference, exactly like the other one, operator, assignment. And in here, <clears throat> I cannot receive a constant anymore. Because I want to move the information of the other one to mine, therefore I need to be able to change it. Because of that, oh, why I put two, I have no idea. Because of that fact, it's a reference, but it's a move reference. And it's not constant. So you have to say name n. So that will be the uh, the whole uh, scenario for it. The logic for it is exactly the same. So you say if this is not equal to reference of n, so self-assignment on all the things, and at the end, you have returned this. There is no problem with that. But what happens inside over here is different with the other one. So what you need to do, first, you have to get rid of the current data, obviously. Because it's an assignment, you have to make sure that you Okay, so so then first you say delete. What was the thing? M value. So M value is deleted. <clears throat> then what do you do? You have to make this M value to point where the other guy's M value is pointing to. To assume ownership of the data of the other one. <clears throat> so now you will say M value will be set to n.m value. 
Now, they are both pointing to the same thing. That's what shallow copying causes, why shallow copying causes trouble. Because then the destructor of both are called, the first one deletes, the second one crashes, right? We have to prevent that. What do we do? We're going to say now n dot n value will be set to null PTR. So now the other one is empty. I have his. It's as if literally you grab something from someone and you take it. Very simple, straightforward, nothing else involved. That's it. That's move assignment. Obviously, uh, I'm going to put that tracer over here to actually tell me that I have done this. So I'm going to bring the tracer over here. And I'm going to do this. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually print the message so I can see. Now, <clears throat> how do I reuse this logic for my copy assi uh, move assignment, uh, move, move constructor? How do I do that? Move constructors is exactly like the other one. So let me just bring it over here. So as you see over here, I'm going to say name, definitely not constant, name, and let's move. Are we okay down to this point? Okay. What you need to do now is to call operator equal and put over here n. What's the problem with this? The problem is that when you don't mention it, the compiler will actually call this one. You need to force it to call this one. How do you extract uh, an L value reference of an object? Like this. That means this is supposed to be moved. So this essentially tells the compiler, you said that, uh, how do I know which one is going to be moved on? So you can manually tell, ask it to do it for you if it's not obvious. When it's obvious, it happens. I'll show you in the code that you don't need to say move. It will move it. But when you need to, you can do it yourself. So in places where nameless objects are getting created and they are about to die, it will move it for you because it knows it's not supposed to happen. And sometimes even move doesn't happen when compiler can actually make it even more efficient. I'll explain that in a second. There's people standing over there behind me. They go, what? did I do something? Or <laughs> Anyways, I felt like I have something on my face. Anyways, uh, so we got down to this point. Yes. This move, that's, that's C++. You can you do use ref or, or move. Ref means I want reference of it. Move means I want move reference of it. You are actually, you are actually instructing that this object is supposed to be moved. This object is not supposed to be, OK? So essentially, when you have move, two refer double reference will be called instead of a single reference. OK? What happened? So like when you move up, move up, right? Why do I need two lines? One line to assign. <coughs> Assignment, you're saying you're? Yeah, because the thing is, is you don't want to do a delete. But you're deleting the current one. Yeah, but the thing is, it's, it's calling that for uh, rather than not. Uh, you're saying it's, it's going to delete? It's a not work. Uh, uh, didn't we have this over here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it's when it's yeah when it's null, let it delete. Who cares? Nothing's gonna happen. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, which is move. Because if you don't, if you don't, you if you don't do it, it doesn't know that it's supposed to be moved. It prefers then it's to copy. When there is a choice, it's gonna pick up the co coffee, pick up the copy one. When I show you the example, so this is the, providing the mechanism for what you are saying to happen. When I show you the main, I'll explain exactly, okay? So you will see when, which one is called and why, okay? So, where is my main? So I'm going to, just for, for, for this, to, to give you an example, I'm going to create a function called getName. GetName creates a name, asks for a name, and receives it and returns it by value. Are we okay with this? Therefore, this end will be copied. The copy is returned, and yada, yada, yada. Are we okay with this? Everybody's okay with that? <clears throat> now, let's see what happens in these scenarios. <clears throat> so I'm going to set the tracer to false, not to bother us. I'm going to walk through instead. Then you can actually set the tracer to true and actually go through it and s see the messages. Okay, I'm going to explain what happens. So I'm going to F11 it, okay, <laughs> to go inside, okay? <clears throat> so let's run it. We know that one argument constructor will be called. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. I'm not going to go through it. A one argument constructor is called. We know the copy constructor is called. We know the no argument constructor is called. Are we okay with this down to this point? So if I look at this one, A will be Fred. If I look at B, B will be Fred. If I look at C, C has nothing. Are we good? All right. And obviously the values will be as such. Are we okay down to this point? Now, if I say say if I say C is set to A, it will call the copy assignment. I don't want to. I want to move the content of A to C. C++ has no mechanism to do that. Read our minds. When you are saying an object is set to another object, it will be set unless you ask otherwise. So, <clears throat> now I'm doing the move. <clears throat> so when I say move A, it actually comes in here. And as you see, it's going to delete the value of the current one, <clears throat> move the value of this one to this one, and set the other one null, and comes out. And as a result, when you look at it, <clears throat> A is Fred no more. You see that? Are we okay with this? And its content is passed to C. It moved. Now, what happens <clears throat> if I actually say name D is equal to na uh, get name? Will any moving be called? Anything like that? Okay, let's take a look. So, what happens over here? <clears throat> it comes into name and gets the name. And as you see, it jumps first to N. <laughs> you see that, right? That's compiler optimizing. OK? <clears throat> and then enter a name. So, and let me enter the name. So in here, I'm going to put uh, Jack. OK? So now, a copy should be returned, correct? Take a look. Oops. Take a look. 
Nothing happened. I pressed F11. It didn't go anywhere. Why? Nameless values never get copied. It's a waste of time. When you have a nameless value containing something, you are saying, create D out of it. Compiler says, I'm not nuts. You just created it. I'm just going to call it D. Done. I don't need to create it. You follow what happened? <clears throat> Get name is returning a nameless value that is about to die. Right? Compiler sees you ask to create an object called D out of that nameless value that has Jack in it. Why do I copy it? It's already nameless. I'm about to kill it. Instead of killing it, I'm going to call it D. Done. Lots of time saved. Are we OK with this? Yes, sir. Pardon me? Yeah, everything's in there. It's not going to call anything because it doesn't need it. No move, no copy, nothing is going to get called. There is no moving happening here. The compiler doesn't. Think about it for a second. Seriously, if I give you a brand new cup of coffee, do you need to empty it in yours? No, you just keep it and use it. Why do you need to do that? It's the same thing. Now, obviously so. Now, take a look at the other one, though. Now, at left side, I have an already existing D. And a nameless is going to go into it. It's going to assign the right one to a nameless. Now the compiler says, I have an already existing object. I am receiving a nameless. I, am, I want to assign it to a nameless object. I cannot call it D because I already have an object. What do I need to do to save time? Move. OK? So when this happens, obviously all these things are happening. And it's getting the name, uh, Fardud, OK? And then what happens over here? So I'm, I'm pressing F11. Take a look. It got full screen because it was on the other one. <laughs> I'm pressing F11 on this one. F11, and it comes out. And take a look. Poof, move. Now it's going to say, I'm going to move. It's going to move the value to the next one. Therefore, D will get the moved value of the nameless. Therefore, the nameless. And, <clears throat> and, and when you see over here, if I actually do F11 again, I, I think it's too late, you would have seen that the destructor of the nameless is called. But it tries to delete nothing. So you turn on the tracer, you see it. So the destructor of nameless will actually be called. But there is nothing to delete because it's set to null. And then, and then uh, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> doing something like this will actually move it instead of, so it will actually, so, so now if I actually come over here, you'll see the move uh, uh, constructor is called. And it obviously moves the, uh, the object to the newly created one. And now E will get the other one, and B becomes nothing. OK? That, ladies and gentlemen, is rule of five. To the bone, yes. No, because it's a reference. Unless, if, if Get name returning a reference, you said? What's the difference? No, no, no. You are returning a reference of a dying object. What is the difference? It's the same. Compiler is smart enough when you are returning copy of. So that's why you see when you do F, then it first jumps to return, then goes back up. It's optimizing it for you. It says, oh, you are creating this, and you are creating a copy out of it, and I have about to kill it, so I'm not going to do that. If I wish I could go back to an old compiler, and you would see actually copy constructors will be called and construct. So it tries, compilers are more, much more efficient. But if you return a reference of it, because the thing you have over there is a dying object, 
First of all, I think compiler is going to give you a warning or something because you are returning a reference of a dying object. That doesn't make sense. Right? Number, or either warning or syntax error or something. Or uh, it's just going to work like the other one. Yes. Question? Time? Yes. Question? Suggestion? Objection? Good. All right. Is that still recording? I think it's off now. Stop. Yeah. Battery's gone. So it's not. I need to bring battery bank later on. <laughs> so that's that. Whew. OK. Yeah, so if I turn the tracer on, then this is what's going to happen. Just starting it, take a little, pew, comes down over here, enter a name, Jack, and comes over here, John, and then please follow the tracer and see what is getting created, what is removed, and what is all the thing. So as you see, uh, when moving is happening, actually remove happens, but remove rem deletes nothing. And that saves lots of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not, yeah, exactly. Nothing gets created. So th those, those are important stuff to go through and see exactly how things happen. Um, why? Um, what's the difference? The difference is that the person who knows what's happening behind the scene, kind of, you never absol absolutely know. It's not 100%. But you have kind of an idea of how the things are happening behind the scene. You can write a better and efficient, more efficient code. Yes, sir. Oh, you're printing it? Probably. Yeah. So you're saying printing it, print receiver reference? No, actually, I don't think it will. Again, it will assume its identity, and then the destructor is called at the end of the print. See how that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. So it goes to the, see, you are passing a nameless object to reference of something, right? Compiler is going to say, I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to call it that. And when it reaches to the end of the function, it's going to get destroyed. Again, no move, nothing. Compiler wants to do the least amount of things. Like even move constructor, it doesn't want to call. The only time move constructor is called when it sees a nameless is being an object with already existing data is being set to a nameless. If that's the case, then moving happens. Okay? Other than that, you can design it to move which is going to be very handy. In your uh, next uh, workshop, probably, you're going to get massive amount of data coming in. And you first return it by rule of three. You will see it's going to take, say, three seconds. And when you do move, it takes 0 0.5 seconds. And you will see it's much, much faster. OK? So do you think we have enough thing? Or should I go to templates, start the templates? Or brains are fried enough tonight, today? Pardon me? No. No, it's just the introduction to it. It's templates, for heaven's sake. And it's not, <laughs> and it's not templates like 244. It's like, holy, I have to go through everything and specialization and all the good stuff. OK. One person that said, let's start. <laughs> nah, for, I'm not going to do it. I, I'm lazy. Let me, let me just, uh, let me just, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to push the code right now, the, <coughs> the, what should we call it, the uh, video I'll try to upload when I'm teaching the other class. So hopefully you're going to have the video pretty soon because over here is internet quick. Uh, so.